I recently made a video about seven animals that hibernate in the UK, which you might not think would do so. And one of the top comments was people asking me to make a video about animals that do not hibernate, that people think do. So here we are, seven animals that live in the UK and don't hibernate. The first animal in this video is the badger, which will probably be obvious to some of you, but will hopefully be a surprise to some others. Badgers build up their body weight in the autumn and can weigh more than 30% more at the beginning of winter compared to the springtime. During colder weather, they might stay underground in their sets for days or sometimes weeks at a time, and they can even enter periods of torpor when their metabolism slow right down and they go into a deep sleep. But this is not considered hibernation as it doesn't last very long and during warmer winters, some badgers will remain completely active throughout the entire year. Badgers do not gather stores of food and rely on their body fat and any food that they are able to forage to get them through the colder months. Next up is a group of animals rather than a single species and that's freshwater fish. I've often heard people speaking about both wild and domestic pond fish in the winter saying that they go into hibernation, but it's not true. Fish don't have the ability to keep themselves warm in the same way as mammals and birds, so as the water temperature drops, so does the temperature of their bodies. This has a knock-on effect on their metabolisms. It slows down their breathing and their reaction times and can make their digestive systems stop working properly. As a result of this, freshwater fish greatly reduce how much they eat in the winter and will often gather in deeper areas. Here, they're safer from predators and further away from the drastic temperature changes near to the water's surface. Due to their slower breathing rate, fish can survive underneath ice for several weeks, as long as there is enough oxygen dissolved in the water. Keeping with the theme of underwater wildlife, the next animal I'm going to speak about is the dragonfly. There are 36 species of dragonfly in the UK and although you are very unlikely to see any of them during the winter, they do not hibernate. They spend the winter as either eggs or aquatic larvae. Dragonflies often lay their eggs in waterside plants or sometimes directly into the water, and depending on the species and what time of year the eggs are laid, they will either hatch in the summer or autumn, or pause development throughout the winter and hatch in the spring. Their predatory aquatic larvae do slow down during the colder months in a similar way to fish, but they don't enter a full hibernation. It's also worth mentioning that some species of dragonfly are migratory and move away from the UK when it gets cold. The next animal is the first, but not the only introduced species on this list, the honeybee. They rely on a diet of nectar and pollen and as both of these foods are in short supply during the winter, honeybees have an interesting strategy to stay alive. To do this, they gather in their hives and continuously vibrate their wings. This creates heat and keeps enough of the workers and the important queen warm enough to survive. This requires a lot of energy and is why honeybees create stores of calorie rich honey to keep them going throughout the cold. During the warmer months, male bees, which are known as drones, are needed to fertilize queens in mating flights. As these flights don't happen during the winter, hives will sometimes evict the drones at the end of the autumn to preserve their honey supplies. These drones will not survive the winter. Next up is the grey squirrel, another introduced and often controversial part of the UK countryside. Grey squirrels are native to parts of North America, where the weather can get significantly colder than it does here, yet even there, they do not hibernate. Just like badgers, they try to put on weight in the autumn and can increase their body weight by up to 25% going into the winter. But they have another strategy as well. In the run-up to winter, they store food in safe places, such as underneath moss, buried underground, 
or in hollow trees, and then return to it later on. In fact, the Grey Squirrel's memory is thought to be one of the reasons why they have colonised new places so well. They have a far better memory when compared to the UK's native Red Squirrel. The next animal I'd like to speak about is another group rather than a single species, and that is birds. Although you might think it's obvious that birds do not hibernate, it's not completely true. There is one species in North America that does hibernate, the common poor will, which is related to the nightjar and can enter a state of reduced body temperature and activity for weeks or even months at a time. Here in the UK though, birds have a few strategies to survive the cold. Summer migrants, such as swallows and house martins, migrate south to warmer places, while some members of the crow family cache food to help them through the harder times. Some birds gather into larger flocks overnight to share their body warmth, and a lot of others put on weight and simply try to find enough food to survive. Next is the water vole. Some of you may have expected another mammal to feature in this video, as there are only three mammals in the UK that do hibernate. If you're not sure which three, then you should watch the suggested video at the end of this one. Water voles live in burrows, mostly alongside watercourses, which is where they gather a lot of their food. During the warmer months, they create stores on floating plants and graze on leaves, flowers and vegetation, but during the winter, when these are in short supply, the water voles instead rely on underground food stores. Although this does help some of them to survive, water voles have a very high winter mortality rate, with only 20 to 30% of them making it through to the spring. And that's all. If you enjoyed this video, check out the one that's on the screen now for more British wildlife. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.